my own party. Why, hello. Hello. Oh, that one's hi. Hold on one second. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just want to do a little mic check. Um, I can't believe I'm late to my own party. Yeah, that's what we were just saying that. <laughs> we're like, where's the guest I, of honor? <laughs> yeah. She's not here. She's late. She is late. It's like the normal stuff, you know, because it's like the balancing of all the people behind out of the booth. Mm -hmm. And um, so my man babe has taken he finally got the job that he needed to get and nice. now he gets thursdays and sundays are his days so i've had to re completely recalibrate my schedule so that i know that i am you know focused on him on thursdays so if we have to go do stuff run errands maybe like go to the beach you know whatever um and sundays too so we were at the pool for a couple of hours i know my life is really tough I know, right? I horrible. So I was just like, oh. <laughs> but okay. um, I had to make sure I fed everybody. So th that's it. Oops. Cool. Okay. okay. Hi. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right, right. Start us. I think my microphone is okay. being I'll weird. Go ahead. So welcome everyone. So uh, when we started this podcast, we knew we wanted to create a series where we could document our journey mm -hmm. in the VO realm. We've been doing it for a couple years now. I'm mean, like two, three it's like years now. Three years, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we lost track. Each of us <laughs> blossoming at our own time and pace. And today we get to talk to one of our flowers. So sit back, enjoy, and let's get started. Yeah. Hey, Joss. Hi. It's meet your actor series so that you can get to yes. know us like individually as like people and not just like the voice in your ear. From a podcast, but yeah, I, I'm trying to think of like where I, I mean, like, can I go as fast as Gina Scarpa? Probably not, but <laughs> how fast can I go so that I can get it all in? Um, so hi, I am obviously Jocelyn. This is so weird being on this side. I have to stop. I'm like a weirdo now. Um, <laughs> okay, do you, all right, all right, all right, hold on. Do you want me to ask you a question or <laughs> do you, does it feel weird? It feels a little weird, but that's okay. I'm okay. like on the other side of the table. Like I think I'm, not, you know, it's just a little bit weird, but I got, I got it. I got it. Okay. Hold on, breathe okay. for a second. Um, okay. So yeah. So I started off in radio. I think my story is pretty similar to a lot of different people that have found their way into voiceover, Angela included. Yep. Um, I was in radio for over 20 years. I started in college. Um, I did not intend to be in radio for that long at all. My intentions when I was in college was to go into communications and then graduate with a communications degree. <clears throat> and then I was planning on being a weather girl. <laughs> and um, and so I left college, took a break and went to like a radio broadcasting school uh, and then was able to do what we normally do, like networking, meet people. I was an intern um, for several years for a couple different radio stations. And then from there, got picked up as a full-time morning show in Lansing, Michigan, and didn't finish my broadcasting school because they were federally funded and they're like, you have to have your butt in the seat in order to like, you know, get mm -hmm. your certification. So I was like, full-time job, certification, I'll take the full-time <laughs> job. So I went and took um, a morning show gig in Lansing and then made my way back to Kalamazoo. And then, um, and you know, as I was bouncing from back and forth from Kalamazoo to Detroit, to Lansing, back to Kalamazoo. And I've been in radio ever since. Um, I love it. I loved radio. Um, yeah. I, I was funny because I was thinking about broadcasting school and I was like, why did I not do TV? And now it's funny because I'm on camera, right? Fast forward, like how many mm -hmm. decades later? And I'm doing it on camera and I thought about, I was nervous of being in front of the camera and the green screen. And that deterred me from because at one point you have to choose radio or TV in broadcasting school if you go to those types of programs, you know, to get, I guess, basically like a trade school, you know, yeah. and you get a certification. Yeah. Um, and and I chose, I was like, oh, what do I do? And so I chose radio. And this is when things were real to real, you know, like, like it was like old school, <laughs> old yeah, school. Yeah. Cassettes were involved. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I saw the transition into like CDs and the jewel cases from carts and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm old school radio. I stayed small market radio in Southwest Michigan that whole time until um, we decided to move to Florida back in 2018 because my husband was like, I'm done with Michigan. 
<laughs> my knees can't take it anymore. Like, I can't stand the snow and the ice. And we're like, why wait until we're in our 60s to retire to move to where we want to be? So we just did it in our 40s and we came down here. Um, my oldest was about to go into seventh grade and we figured if we didn't do it, you know, we were going to have yeah. to wait until he went through high school. And the other two were so young, it like, it didn't matter. They were like, my youngest wasn't even in kindergarten. And my, my middle was like going, was second grade or something like that. So, um, best decision of my life moving down to Florida. Um, awesome. like the first six months I had a little bit of a, holy shit, what did I do? Why did I do this? Why are we here? Oh my God, the new trees, new bugs, new grass, like new weather, everything. Um, but now my soul feels um, complete. You know, it feels happy. I don't know. I, I, which was unexpected, you know, and I have a lot of like unexpected things on my journey that hopefully is validating or inspiring or maybe something that's similar to other people's experiences. But I didn't expect to love living in Florida, just like I didn't expect to love being in radio. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was just odd. Um, I did bring my job down here because I was a voice tracker, which is pre-recording your shows. I did a morning show and an afternoon show. And um, I also did weekends for a hot, like an AC station. So I was full, like full-time voice tracker for an alternative rock station. And then I did weekends and fill for the adult contemporary station. So I had two different names because they were sister stations. So I was Jocelyn and Taylor. Um, so my, my <laughs> so husband, silly. it really is a silly idea, but yeah. Right? I mean, they were like, you can't use the same name. I'm like, why? And they're like, cause I'm like, okay. That's, it. Um, that's, that's the it. only reason just cause Cause. <laughs> and my husband's always like who are we today and I was like today we <laughs> um so I had a lot of fun doing that and um when we decided to move to Florida when I get my mindset on something I'm very determined and so I went to the audio engineer I went to my general manager I went to my <clears throat> program director and I said hey what if I voice track from Florida like what's the big deal and this is before you know everything kind of happened with COVID and stuff like that. Like there wasn't a lot of these kinds of opportunities, not in my world, not that I was familiar with. So um, we figured it out. We figured out how I could remotely voice track from my closet in 2018. And we did that for like three, four months. And then accounting and I don't know, you know, corporate, you know, corporate ra radio, they like didn't like it. They got fussy about it and um, they put me on ice. And then of course, Angela knows this, they flipped the format and then they just kind of like slow oh I'm getting a thumbs up they slowly they just kind of put me on ice and just you know kind of set me out to pasture which I had watched every single one of my friends I was literally the last one of everybody I had known in that market um still in radio you know that's just kind of the thing oh, I'm thumbs upping myself again <laughs> um yeah so then I had uh uh sort of a crisis like an identity crisis because I'm like now what you know I had hung I had when I got married and I have to backtrack a little bit we weren't going to have kids we were zero kids um, yeah both of us were zero kids and then we decided to have a kid and we decided that I was going to stay home full time but I managed with voice tracking at the radio station to be able to do that part-time so I stayed full-time at home with my kids, managing my kids and my family, and then was able to still do like part-time voice tracking that mm -hmm. whole time. So when we moved to Florida, my youngest was about to go into kindergarten. So I was set up to, to go back to work full-time. So now I didn't have a full-time job and now I didn't even have a part-time voice tracker job. And all my kids are in school and I'm like, what do I do now? Who am I? Where am I going? What am I doing? And my husband's like, you should voice track. I'm like, yes, I should just do that what is that like how am I supposed to do that and yeah. um yeah so do you want me to pause I'll pause do you have questions yeah, or, yeah I have a question so during that exit uh your your midlife crisis I don't know how old were you <laughs> identity, uh, crisis? identity crisis because I feel like a lot of women feel like um they're too old to have to go through these crises or they they seem like they're too old to like figure out a good solution or they just feel stuck. And a lot of it, a lot of the time has to do with their age because mm -hmm. they feel like they can't move forward. 
Yeah, I would say the reason why I um, I tried to do voiceover, I tried to like, you know, figure it out. Um, but for me and Angela's, you know, pointed this out to me before, I like to take classes. I like to train. I like to learn. I don't feel like I'm doing it properly unless I have somebody show me how to do it properly. Yeah. And so um, I've learned over the years and Lloyd has patted me on the back before, like, you know, a little while ago, like, um, you know, I've learned to like get over that hump of feeling like I can't do something unless I train to do it. I can I now feel like I'm confident enough to be able to figure it out. Correct. Like I can figure it out. It might not be perfect. Yeah. It might be messy. But like I am now really proud of myself in the last like, you know, since 2018, I've figured things out. Like I figured out how to start a podcast. Right. Um, which is yeah. how I got to got into voiceover but to answer your question gabby before i go way down my rabbit hole um i was in my 40s so you know i was i'm not gonna tell you my i mean i think i look a little bit younger than what most people expect you look yeah. way younger absolutely you were 26 27 when i first saw <laughs> oh you yeah. gabby you're my favorite that, you don't have to be like <laughs> give us a specific age but you can just say in the 40s um so that, you know, our, our listeners can get an, have an idea. Maybe there's somebody in their 40s that's like, oh, no, I'm too old to, like, start something new. No, yeah. you're not. Absolutely you're never not. too old to reinvent yourself. Like, you're mm -hmm. never too young or too old. Like, I feel like age is not is irrelevant. Um, you know, yeah. there's other things, I think, that can contribute to preventing you from reinventing yourself. But um, I also think that you have to be open to it. And um, mm -hmm. I figured out how to podcast a girlfriend of mine. Um, we started keeping up with chaos that was not smushed with from the booth and beyond driveway drinking, sitting in lawn chairs as our younger kids are running up and down the street playing. And, um, she's like, we should podcast. I'm like, what in the hell is a podcast, you know? <laughs> and so then I had had surgery, so I was laid up. So I had time to figure it out. Right. So I figured it out and we started podcasting and through podcasting, that evolved, right? Um, mm -hmm. It evolved. And I started bringing on guests. And through bringing on guests, I reconnected with a friend from high school, Ian, Ian Scott, who's also a voice actor. And he had told me about the voice actor studio. So um, I have to press pause on that for a second because I had wanted to be in voice acting since I was like literally 16 years old. Um, because my, one of my best guy friends, his dad, that was his full-time job. He was a voice actor. Um, in the Detroit area and um, wow. he was the sole provider for their family and provided his family you know finances through voice acting this is like a long time ago so you know old yeah. school voice actor and he had said to me he had a whole setup in his closet down in his basement and he had said to me I think I said this to you guys before but he had said to me like you have a great voice and I was like okay awesome and we know now that that's not all that it takes to be a voice actor mm -hmm. right. but back then that was kind of in the pocket of things, right? Um, yeah. And so he's like, you just have to come up with some characters. And he showed me his studio in the basement in a closet. It sounds, that sounds really creepy. But um, <laughs> I, I swear it was like totally innocent. And um, and I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, what, what? You know, like you're 16. Like you're, your head is up your ass. Like you don't know what's going on. So <laughs> I went yeah. to college and I told you what happened in college. I went and got into radio and stuff. So, um, so again, voice acting, you know, fast forward through podcasting sh presented itself again to me, um, through my friend who was training at the voice actor studio. And I was like, wow, wow. There's actually like a place I could like go to. And because of COVID and everything was virtual, I was able to take the intro class in December of 2020. And I was like, oh, and that's why I met Gabby and Angela. Yep. Yes, that's right. Oh yeah, all of us. <laughs> I, I bought it for myself for like a birthday present because my birthday's in January. And um, and I was scared, so scared, like just anxiety induced and just thinking about how, oh, am I frozen? Okay, no. Um, and then I was hooked after that intro class. And then I took the four week and then just like Lloyd has done himself I, nonstop classes, like any class I could take, I took any ongoing, I could book, you know, to, to train. I mean, I was, I've spent a boat load of time and money. Yeah. Go ahead, Lloyd. You can no, I'm just jump saying, in. Yeah, yeah, no. So I, much. I was just saying, yeah. Yeah. It looks I, like I, same. I, yeah. Ditto. Ditto. <laughs> but it's worth it though. It's worth it. Yes. Yeah. 
yeah, it's, um, yeah. So I took a ton of classes and, um, I was, you know, over the course of time, um, you know, I had, we were getting ready to all go in person to go meet each other in person that one fall. Um, I think that was like what, 2021, mm -hmm. I believe. And huh. I was thinking that I was going to be ready to, you know, do my commercial demo and, um, you know, some life stuff happened. I had some like health issues that I, female health issues that I had to sort of like put on focus, you know, and other things kind of had huh. to go on the back burner and I still was managing my family and stuff. But for the very first time when voiceover presented itself again, um, and I actually went for it. I finally felt like I was put, I'd always put my husband and my kids first. I finally was able to put me even with them, you know, and I yeah. really was able to focus on something that I wanted to do Yeah, and I was determined, you know? Um, yeah. Do you guys have any questions? I'm, I feel like I'm missing something. By the way, I just to tell you in my middle, like he was eating with his hands and I'm like, and then he would take a fork and fork the food. This is so random. And like hold it, but then like take <laughs> his hand and take the food with his hand and put the food on the fork. Hmm. <laughs> is he okay? <laughs> I'm like, getting enough sleep. <laughs> and just playing like, too many video games. What's happening here? <laughs> I like wrote it on a note because I was like this is hilarious I literally like was staring at him last night at dinner I was like what is happening right now like why is this even <laughs> Your kids are so weird yep. and I was like could you yep. just use your fork like regular like could you just like fork the food and like put it in your mouth like why are we your hand to put on the fork and still not use the fork I'm like what's happening right now I don't know if this is relevant but what are you guys eating chicken I think I was eating oh. chicken but he was eating chicken <laughs> Oh, you know, as someone <laughs> with ADHD, yes, I just if you saw the things I do around my apartment on the blue <laughs> random, <laughs> yes, that's I, I, yep, you don't have to I say more. Like, I live with what the he's child. doing, yeah, he's so funny, but he, like, he, he has he should do improv because he was like, oh, well, um you know, there's other countries that eat with their hands and there's, there's no problem there. And I'm like, yeah, but that's, we're culturally speaking, we're not from those countries. And so therefore we're not practicing those sort of like, you know, ways of yeah. eating. And he was like, had this whole, like, he was exclamation, explanation. You know what? I'm on his side. All right. He, <laughs> if he wants to test out a new way of eating that he's comfortable with, good for him. As long as he finishes that meal, right? Right. As long as he right. finishes the meal. Oh boy! <laughs> I hope he watched the stands. <laughs> right, I think that's funny. So you know, I I did a lot of training. Um, I was lucky that I had some resources. I did you know have utilize a credit card. If anybody's wondering, like, how did you pay for all these classes? La la la. Um, and so lots you know, debt. yeah, lots of debt. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I am sitting going into my third year of um going at you know this full time. Um, am I earning an income that's full time? No, uh, I would maybe consider a part time income, full time voice actor. Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. know. And um, but really exciting. Uh, last fall, I find I think it's taken me. I feel like I'm a turtle. Like you know, with it's kind of my artwork, and it goes with like who I am. But I think that you know, I'm just like that steady, consistent, keep going, persistent, one foot in front of the other kind of person. And I have really. When I cut my demo, I realized that I knew where I wanted to go, but I don't think I necessarily knew all of what I could do. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it took that time cutting my demo after all that training and being launched out into the great wide world of voice actor, being a voice actor and just diving off that diving board and just wading through and navigating through everything that we talk about and share about, you know, has really... It's given me confidence. It's shaken me to the root. It's given me guidance. It's made me realize like who I am. Um, and it's also stressed me out and pushed me to like limits that like I didn't think that I would ever get to. But another surprising thing is that through voice acting, I fell into on camera, which is kind of yeah. like full circle, you know? Yeah. Um, which is surprising because I didn't expect 
to, to, to be on camera and I fell into on camera accidentally because of our mutual friend, Frankie, my dogs are fighting if you can hear them. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and, um, he had said, I don't think I want to do voice acting right now, or I'm going to press pause on voice acting. I think I want to do acting. And I said, sign, sign, a, find a class. I'll take it with you. Um, and so I started taking classes with Frankie and I'm booking national, regional on-camera commercials, you know, um, Florida is a big commercial state. Like this film and TV is usually in Atlanta, but like here it's a lot of commercial. We've got Disney and the cruises and all kinds of companies. So I'm booking on-camera commercials. I've got, you know, a handful underneath my belt at this point. And, um, last fall going into the winter, I booked several national and read, you know, national, big national clients, um, that I have now on my roster of like clients that, you know, was really exciting and, had the experience of connecting with like a client, which was Mare Azuro, which is Jared and Levion partnered up. And so I was the voice of their holiday collection. So I basically was Mother Earth, you know, essentially, Mm -hmm. um, which was just like a check off my voiceover bucket list, you know, because I knew my voice could do that. And to, to find a client and a script and to connect and then just have a beautiful experience working with that client. And I didn't even find it on the normal pay to place. I found, well, I mean, I found it on back backstage, you know, yeah. so not uh-huh. like the voiceover, voiceover one, two, three. So I've had a lot of luck on backstage. I've had a lot of good, mo- I've had a lot of cli- good clients on backstage and yeah, for voiceover and on camera. But yeah, that was a really, that was one of those things where it's like literally Halloween and the client texts me at like 6.01. I'm literally walking out the door with butterflies on, on you know in my hair and like a tutu and they're like we need you to recut this you know (laughs) sentence and I'm like oh pause children you know and I go running into the booth and Mm. you know turn everything on and I do whatever I need to do and I send it off to them and she was like thank you and I'm like yes you know so that was exhilarating and a little stress inducing so but fun. <laughs> so, question: uh, you, you did take a couple of classes for on-camera acting, but did you feel like your voiceover training really played a part in in your, some of your acting roles? Yeah, I think so. I feel like I did it backwards. I think that's like a that's like my thread. Like most people come from theater and acting on stage, you know, they're actors, and mm-hmm. then they find themselves in a voice acting. I feel like I kind of did it reverse. I mean, I'm not the only one, but yeah, I think. I went into acting to learn how to to pull those words off, you know, and embed mm-hmm. them with like more emotion and less like announcer. I think they go hand in hand. I think they've like, yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I think I went into acting to support a friend and then fell in love with it and then was like, oh, this is going to help me with voice acting. And interestingly enough, the on-camera stuff has actually been popping more than voice acting, mm-hmm. which is, it was interesting, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And, um, but I have some projects that I'm working on for voice act, voice acting, which is, I have an audio book, which is another cool thing, you know, that like when you find the right client and you find the right project and it's a great match, you know, it turns into something pretty awesome, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think the other part of my story that's interesting, and anyways, the the audiobook series is really cool because I I auditioned for it through TVAS, the voice actor studio, and it was one of those things where like I saw the audition and I read the audition, I was like the character literally fell out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like have you ever had oh, that wow. experience? It like literally yeah. fell out of my mouth, and I was like, wow, that was weird. Like I'm never gonna forget that moment, but send it, forget it, you know. And I didn't think twice about it. And then when I got booked, I was like, "Holy shit, that actually happened!" All That's right, awesome. you know. And <laughs> um, and it's turned into like, you know, a great relationship with the client. We stay in touch, and it's a fully produced audio book. So I just do the I do the audio, and then I send it off to the producer, and then the producer produces it. And there's more several characters in so it's sort of like an audio drama but it's an audiobook you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but through that which is another surprising thing and because of the relationship that I developed with this client it's called mafia madam so again murder and meditation <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and er- mother earth is like i'm figuring out is where my voice fits you know mm-hmm. um 
and outdoors and fitness and you know granola e yogi thing yogi things um and yeah like outdoor stuff but um they hired my my oldest son my 18 year old to play my supporting role because in the audiobook i'm the narrator and i'm also the main character um and so they recast the son and it was my 18 year old so awesome. that was his that. first experience that's with so that. cool yeah, and it, we and and this particular author um, really wanted, you know, acting, you mm. know. So through my voice acting training, and I took a lot of audiobook, I did a lot of training for audiobooks through the Voice Actor Studio, but also with the acting classes, I think that really benefited me. Yeah, I think I've kind of mer I think I blended the two together because mm -hmm. I've also worked with a lot of indie filmmakers, and I've done voiceover for indie filmmakers and student films. I have a film up in New York from Tisch University and it's they're they're now circulating through the the um film festivals awesome. so um they just went to, I'm giving myself the thumbs up again. <laughs> we just recently went to the I think it's Tribeca it was a Tribeca film festival it's on the east coast and I wasn't able to fly up there to be with the cast but um it's been it's been another interesting surprise that mm -hmm. like you know finding voice over voiceover finding me and then tumbling into acting and then just like the sort of the blending of it all. Um, right. Yeah. And what's cool is that your, your kids are getting involved too. Like you're able to, yeah. to coach them and teach them and, and kind of guide them through this process, which at the time when all of us were starting out seemed daunting and yeah. confusing and scary, but yeah. now they have somebody to hold their hand, which is really, really cool. Yes, exactly. Mm. Um, so yeah, my youngest is actually, he, he, he told me he was a voice actor because they saw me, you know, and I think what's also is very inspiring what Gabby was brought up in my age, you know, in my mid life area or time, <laughs> <laughs> I was like circling around it. Um, you know, in your forties, um, it's neat to be able as a mom or, you know, any parent to show your kids that you can reinvent yourself at any age and stage mm -hmm. in, in your life. If you so yeah. choose. And, um, and so I feel like it, it, um, I, I feel, I keep looking over here. I'm looking at like a rainbow that my, my kid drew me, but, um, I think that it inspired him. Cause he's like, I'm a voice actor. I'm like, all right, well, let's put your money where your mouth is like, let's go. You know? So he's, and I think that, um, through Blake and, um, I was able to venture out of our home base, which is the voice actor studio where I started because I was motivated to find him a coach. Mm -hmm. And so through finding him a coach, I was, I stumbled into the voiceover Atlanta and I stumbled into all this, like this whole big wide world, you know, where I've just stumbled around. I've had some great wins. I've had some great losses. I've had some, oh shits, <laughs> you know, but I've met some great people and great coaches and, um, my youngest is voice, a voice actor now, and he has he has an agent through my agent, and I'm trying to get him his own agent. And then he's also doing some on camera stuff too. I can't wait to book a mom and son role together, but um, <laughs> like a Tide commercial or like a Target commercial. And it's like there's Giles, there's Blake, but um, yeah, he he books regularly, you know, and he's having a lot of fun with it, and. Um, so that's exciting. Although then that, like what you were saying, Angela, that puts me in not only as a voice actor, but now here I am in my booth and I'm a director, I'm mm -hmm. a producer, I'm mom, you know, and Coaching, yeah, 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 manager, yeah, everything. yeah. So managing uh, his, you know, career is also, you know, interesting. And this audiobook with your oldest is—is is this like the only thing he's really gotten into so far, or is he—is he also thinking this may be an avenue for him as well? Yeah, it's funny that you said that because he had realized that his younger brother was making more money than he was, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and had inquired about voice acting. Like, wait, like, what a can second. I do here, Bob? What can yeah. I do here? <laughs> and then organically, naturally, that opportunity came up, and I am a full, firm believer in the universe provides when. Yeah. You know, and and so that came up and I said, would you like to try this? And he said, yeah, I said, well, this is a real learning on the fly, organic opportunity. And let's be grateful for it. And then we'll see if you like it. And if you like it now, that character, his character was killed off in the first book. Mm. So oh. you won't be joining me. Yeah, it was at least he had a taste of it, though. He got a taste of it. I actually yeah. really I cried at the end of that audiobook, like oh. literally for real. 
Like I have chills thinking about it because I was so, in, I, I am still invested because I'm getting ready to do the second book, but, um, which is, it's yeah. And, um, but I cried cause you know, I'm like holding my son in my arms and like, as a mom, you're like, shit, dude, that's oh. heavy, <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> and then I had to like go through that whole scene again with my son coaching mm -hmm. him and directing him and producing him. Ugh, it was, it was, Oof. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's a little deep. It's a little deep. <laughs> it was Very deep. And he's like, yeah. yeah, but he did a great job and he doesn't have, any, but he, then now he's like getting ready to go to college and he's mm -hmm. like, Hey, do you think I could do this? And I'm like, absolutely. You know, like mm -hmm. let's get you some coaching. So he's actually going to be meeting with Gina Scarpa um, nice. this week. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and terrible. I'm, yeah, in my middle, and she's works with kids, and um, we also work with Martha Khan. But um, it's hard to find coaches for kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and we all know about the drama that happened in the industry that was connected to a coach that worked with kids, one of the you know kids coaches, and we had been connected to that. And you know, it's hard. It's hard to advocate and navigate for yourself, but then you have to also and manage your own business. <laughs> And then adding kids into the mix, it gets a little like tricky, but yeah, for sure. It's like, it's becoming a family. It's becoming a family affair. <laughs> yeah. We just need to get man babe in there. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. He would never, <laughs> he would never, you never know. I don't you know. Gotta get, you got to get him on one of those, like, you know, how Lloyd has that, that dragon. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you need to get one of those parts for, for man babe. Like, the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't as good as Lloyd's, but yeah. you know. <laughs> We, that's funny. We try, he, I've had him audition with me for, there's a lot of real on camera stuff, to, especially down here in Florida. And really they want real families, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they want real mom and dad and kids. Cause it's, yeah. Can they, can they match you up? Of course. But like when you've got the real chemistry with the real people, with the real mom and dad and kids, um, yeah. they're looking for that. Like just like in voiceover, they want authentic. So um, my youngest and I were doing a lot of mom and son. And then sometimes they will, if they need a family of four, maybe they'll do, I'm like, we're a real mom and son combo. So, you know, I would audition like that. Um, and then they could just find us another, find us a dad and another kid. Um, but then I, I convinced the man, babe, <laughs> this is so funny. I'm gonna, he's going to kill me. But I convinced him to audition for a couple of these like on camera family gigs. And he like literally is like, Hi, I'm Mr. Naraki. He's <laughs> <laughs> just so, he just, he's all looking he, directly at the camera. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, Oh, that's exciting. Like, it's just, Aw. oh, bless his heart. He tried. He, he tried. Yeah. He just needs a little work. A little he's coaching. Like, no, no. He was like, never again. This is your <laughs> thing. Never again. Don't ask. I'm not doing it. I support you, but I'm not doing it. But he was. That's funny. Yeah. He was just super uptight about it. It was really fun. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. though. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. it's awesome that, you know, the whole family can be involved and see they're they're seeing your success mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, OK, you know, if mom's doing it, so can I, I can get in there and, and, you know, try my hand. Even even man, babe, will try his hand. That's yeah. which yeah. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool that they're they're seeing your success and they're they're following lead. So exactly. I was going to tell you guys something funny, too, because like, you know, sometimes I have to like take head, I have to take real real time pictures, like not just I have headshots and, you know, I made my own reel for on camera stuff. I made my own reel and I'm still trying to collect footage from like real bookings that I have. But it always takes forever for them to get back to you. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get it, it's kind of too old. So whatever. Right. <laughs> but like a lot of times now they're asking for like real selfies or and your headshot. And I have to take my own pictures because my husband doesn't take good pictures of me. I'm like, how did you catch like the worst? I'm like, eh. you know, like, it's just like the worst picture. I'm like, just don't this. Never it's like mind. it shows your true spirit. <laughs> yeah. Just, I mean, it's like kind of a joke with one of my girlfriends. Cause she says the same thing. Like my husband never takes a good picture of me. I'm yeah. like, I'm always look just terrible. But, sure wait, do you husbands take... don't take good pictures of their wives when their wives are asking for them. The best pictures are the ones where their wives aren't paying attention. That's probably very true. Yes. Yeah. Is that true? Yes, it do is. Do you take good true. pictures, Lloyd? I mean, it's literally my job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Duh. Duh. Lloyd, you're hired. Fair. <laughs> it's funny i have my youngest um take pictures for me but he's still like much shorter than me you know so all my boys are almost taller than me like everybody's almost like yeah 
And but when he takes pictures of me, it's just like, oh, that's definitely not a good angle, you know. It's, <laughs> it's all looking up, up yeah. your nostrils. Yeah, that's definitely not flattering. <laughs> so, anyways, they want to um, see all sides of you, just that I mean, even your nostrils. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know we're gonna go over. I had some like random things. Do you have any more like voice acting stuff? Because I was gonna tell you guys some like random things about me, like a little bit pers- personality. I was gonna say like. I think the biggest thing I've learned in the last couple of years is that just figuring out who my voice is and who I am. Mm -hmm. And it took getting out here with my demo and moving through and navigating through things and having some stumbles and having some pitfalls and some just like, oh, shit, that, that, oh, that sucked. And we've shared those, you know. Um, But I realize now that, like, I had a moment when I did an on-camera commercial. I have, like, the chills. And it was close by here. And I took my teenager with me. And I pushed myself to to do this commercial, even though I didn't know if I'd be super comfortable doing it. But I was like, whatever, it's close by. And I I spent the whole day with strangers touring around the city, checking for, for Visit Florida. I just shared the campaign or one little part of it recently on social media. And I left, I, I kayaked in the, you know, in the Everglades and... I did things that, like, I never thought I'd be able to do. I really pushed myself. And I'm not, like, that's a random thing. I'm not a big fan of putting my body in a vessel in water. I like being by the water. I like being my toes and my body near the ocean. But I do not like being all the way in the water or on the water in a vessel. So that was, like, a big deal for me. But I was, like, I'm in. And I left that shoe filled. Like, my whole cup was filled. Like, my heart was singing. I don't know how else to describe it. And I was like, I could do this every day. You know what I'm saying? Like I could do this every day. It was like working with the Mare Azuro, um, just for like one example, you know, just could do that all day long. Sign me up. Yeah. Let's Um. go, you know? So yeah. Lloyd, were you going to say something? I feel like. No, I just said, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I mean, I think it's great though. Cause you know, once you, you know, we, we talked about this a lot, especially in the beginning of our, our journeys is the following the breadcrumbs, you know, like uh-huh. once you, you kind of pick up one thing and then something else drops and you're like, oh, okay, let me, let me go find that. What's going on over here. And mm-hmm. it just keeps going. And, and, you know, you've had so much success so far in your career and, and it just keeps building. And, you know, every time you have those moments of, wow, you know, those, those all inspiring moments, you know, like it just, it just solidifies that, you know, you're on the right path, which is really awesome. Yeah. That yeah. Was- I will tell you, though, that, like, in between the wins, there's been down times. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, you know, it hasn't been all uphill, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's been uphill getting to where I needed to be, but it hasn't been, like, a smooth ride. You know, it's it's a roller yeah. coaster. Yeah. Um, and that takes – you got to get your sea legs, you know? It mm-hmm. takes it takes time. And um, I just kind of came out. I just moved through and navigated through, like, a real, like, kind of low point in my career Um, April was tough. I had to sort of recalibrate and refocus on my family um, and, you know, be the support for them. Not that I wasn't before, but, you know, and um, and, you know, things weren't really moving and on camera or until the end, I booked like a a little gig at the end. But again, it was like they found me on a platform. They had three of my samples from my demo that they used specifically to say what they liked, wanted from me for their campaign. I did it for them. I, I voiced it for them. I sent it to them. They said, this is great, but can you just fix this one little line? I said, perfect. No problem. I fixed it. I sent it to them. They booked me. And I didn't even have to do anything. No live direct. I didn't have to go through, sit through like a, you know, Zoom, nothing. They just said, send us the wave. Send us yeah. the wave and you're good. Boom. I was like, that is a double win right there. But again, Absolutely. it's like being patient, being persistent and keep going and moving through those low points so that you can get to the higher points. Yeah. You know, cause it is like a roller coaster. Yeah. And, and you honestly, you don't know your wins unless you have a loss. So yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you really got to take the wins and losses together. So yeah, that's true. That's very true. I know we're going over on time, but, um, I wanted to, I was going to tell you another thing. Um, like, trying to find agents you know that's kind of like what i've been doing in the year three year three Mm -hmm. i feel like it's really important to add agents and so um you know sometimes recognizing that like when you don't think things are going the way that you want them to go but bigger and better things are just waiting for you on the horizon and so i just signed with another on-camera agent 
So in the state of Florida, we are um, a right to work state. So um, a lot of these actors I've come across, they have multiple agents here, you know. Um, so I just had, and I was able to get the agent on the phone and we had like a nice lengthy conversation and she's super cool. And she knows some other people that I knew I have started to meet locally here. Um, so it was just really, you know, a nice cap to April being a little bit rough, but yeah. Yeah. So agents are important. Congratulations on the agent. Thank you. Thank you. And I have to tell you, I did, you know, um, my youngest Blake, who he's not fully represented officially by a, a, a voiceover agent, but he is unofficially represented by my by my voiceover agent. And um, but I with my is that Cam- an age thing? No, it's no. I think it's an agent thing. Like I think they were like oh, okay. they just they send out aud- like a bunch of auditions. They don't send them. Spe- they send it to everybody. And she oh, said, okay. I know I'm. We won't officially sign him, but um. You know, like if he, if an audition comes and it's in the specs, like we know somebody. We, yeah, we we you know definitely have him audition. So I'm trying to get him. We're in the process of trying to get him. I'm thumbs up being myself again. <laughs> um, we're in the process of getting him an audition or an agent, and um, we have a couple. We had a couple bites, big bites, and I can't talk about it, but still working on it. But um, so that's working. But I managed to get him an on-camera agent because an odd. This is why I'm telling you guys this. If you don't ask you don't get Mm -hmm. and so my on-camera agent my first one had sent an audition and in the audition it had my specs and there was a mom part and they had specs for my youngest Blake and so I sent I I said please submit me and hey by the way I have a 10 year old that's a voice actor but he's also dabbles in on camera would you be interested in maybe submitting us as a mom-son duo absolutely and then they signed him so you know like you don't okay. ask, you don't get it, right? Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Okay. That's great. Um, thank you. Um, so I have to tell I'm gonna tell you a couple little fun facts about me that I wrote down. Um, I'm obsessed with social media organization videos. Just... <laughs> like the kitchen, the kitchen organization <laughs> yes, videos. And bathroom. And stuff. Mm-hmm. My the name bathroom. is Jocelyn. <laughs> um, I have a problem. I have is a problem. It a bunch of uh stuff that's like, oh, that looks really cool, but I'm not actually gonna go do any of it. Right. I would. If I had a million dollars, I would buy every single one of those things. And the ASMR on those things are just ridiculous. I'm like, oh my God, like this is She's all falling asleep to the I know. I'm like, the sound of <laughs> Q tips going into a jar. The nails. Um I uh I already told you I don't like to be I like to be by the water. Like mm-hmm. I love I think the uh-huh. ocean and having my toes. I, I mean I live in Florida. Um I don't like to be in a vessel in water. I will do it though, if I have to. Um, and I was going to say that I'm originally from Michigan, so I am Midwestern. Um, I met my husband at a radio station. He came to meet me. Oh. I didn't know he was coming to meet me. Oh. I thought he was coming for a tour. <laughs> oh. oh. Sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and I couldn't get rid of him. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And 22 years later, here we, here we go. Here we go. Three <laughs> kids and 22 years later. Um, I've never eaten a fast food hamburger in my entire life. Wow. That's impressive. What? Wow, yeah. I would say that's impressive. And I never <laughs> ate a Twinkie until I was in my 20s. That's like, not as impressive, to be I know, honest. I know, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, the hamburger, though. But, yeah. yeah. The hamburgers everywhere. And yeah. there's so many of them. What? Nope. Yeah. Do you, do you not like hamburgers? I don't no? eat meat. You know, oh, yeah, that makes I mean, sense. I, I haven't eaten red meat since like senior year in high school or something like that. Oh. But, but but even like when you were eating red meat, like, like as yeah. a kid, not really. in, like elementary school, like I know Friday hamburgers. No, <laughs> with my the dad, tater tots. My dad didn't like fast food. He was just kind of like, nope, you're not going to do it. And so, no. What oh. about like just home grilled hamburgers? Oh yeah, I mean I had oh, okay. like okay. regular like homemade hamburgers. Okay. I stopped that, that, that makes me a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I've, like, I've had all hamburger. It's not from like McDonald's or like Burger Sure. Well, you're not, not missing nothing with McDonald's. Places. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I hate squirrels. I do not like squirrels. I, I Why? like low the squirrels. Why? Um, I mean, th- th- we'd have to have like a whole nother like, I mean, <laughs> we need some time. What you're saying <laughs> is it's trauma. It's trauma. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, I got I got attacked by a squirrel when I was younger. It's a really funny story. So remind oh, me to tell you when wow. we have some drinks. I'll, We're I'll gonna have you. to have people leave in the comments like, a, tit- a title of a podcast about squirrels. Why Jocelyn yeah. hates squirrels? Yeah. Like, I use that when they say on camera, "Tell us a little something interesting about you." And sometimes I'll that's say, great. I that's like fantastic. Squirrels. Yeah, that's a good one. That's and I said, one. and ask me later if you book me. You know, <laughs> you know I'll tell you all about it. A cliffhanger. Yeah. That's great. Right? Nice little yeah. Hook. Well, you know, I try. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm a. I love coffee. Mm. I'm obsessed with coffee, and I. I still like struggle that like sometimes you have that first cup of coffee, and it's like the best cup of coffee, and then you're like, no other cup of coffee is gonna ever be better than this. So why should I even have another one? But then I drink a whole pot. So it's like, I like yeah. drink a lot of coffee. <clears throat> the entirety of the time we've been talking, I'm like, I need more coffee. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you guys? I feel like I've just I've gone over our time limit. Do you have any questions? Did I cover? It? I think you did a do great you know job. Me? Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like I know you inside. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Angela, do you want to ask the final question or a oh, fun question? A fun question. I or wasn't on, prepared. Okay, Sorry. No, no. no. Okay, <laughs> Lloyd, you ask the final question because you you were most recently. In, the, the question we one. always ask yeah or you can ask like, i feel like it's question. unfair because you know what the question yeah is. okay sorry you already well, thought of it okay fine <laughs> you you okay you ask a different question oh um <clears throat> or i can what's you your, can ch- what's your dream role Ooh, good one Ooh. yeah that is tough i thought i actually thought about this because um, one of our guests said that's important to know, like, the type of roles that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and Alexander Cedar, she was like, when I had a, my consult, she's like, know what roles you're looking for. I think my dream role, there's two. I'd want, I want to do a Hallmark for sure. Like, I definitely want to play, like, the crazy aunt, the fun aunt, or, like, the mom, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then um, I would love to do something like Lincoln Lawyer or, um, you know, like, ho- homeland or you know something where i might have like a reoccurring role in a series that yeah. would be super fun you know action thriller i i won't oh that's the other thing is i i won't do nudity on camera mm-hmm. we've talked about this a little bit in our girl talk um and i uh i i, I don't want to do horror i'm you know i know my voice is meant for Horror, but like acting in a horror movie, I don't think I could do it. I think I'd be too scared. Lloyd's not shocked. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not shocked. I also feel like it it would depend on the role, though. Like maybe yeah. if you're like a psychiatrist in a horror movie and you're never involved in any of the murder. Gore That's and true. Horror, you know? Yeah, like <laughs> the beginning of the horror movie, you could yeah. be the the I don't know the girl that works at the store. You know, in the beginning yeah. of the film. That's true. That's true. I mean, there are people who have substantial roles in horror movies who aren't killed because they're right. not involved by, in, mm-hmm. not involved in whatever. <laughs> That's yeah. true. <laughs> never say never. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Pick one or two. We'll do a final question. Two. Uh, two. This is two. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what is a normal thing that we should be able to do but can't? Normal thing that we should be able to do but can't. That's a tough I struggle one. Struggle with that question. I, I, what, do they, what do they mean by normal? I don't know. I mean, maybe like you can't tie your shoes, or maybe it's I don't know, hard for you. Oh, oh, do. not we as like a collective, but we as a, as a person. Yes. Okay. Can you read it one I more can't time? Stick out my tongue. You can't. Like, no, no but tied. that's like a that's I, like a body uh, thing. Oh my god, he can't. <laughs> Um, wow (laughs) yeah i thought i couldn't do that's funny that's funny that you can't do that because you're tongue-tied right yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. he's trying he's trying Uh, hard yeah Yeah. (laughs) i don't try too hard because there's like that whatever that's connected to it's like does it hurt it'll like rip huh yeah uh yeah Yeah. that sounds like it would hurt hate that be careful it's like a paper cut under your tongue. Yes. Oh, no. Terrible. Oh, no. 
Oh my no, god, thank that's you. so funny. I'm trying to think what I can do. I didn't think I could do a cartwheel, but then my sister-in-law challenged me a couple of years ago and she said, you could do a cartwheel. I'm like, maybe I could do a cartwheel. So I think I can do a cartwheel. I can't do a handstand though. Like maybe that's not, is that's not normal. It's significantly more difficult than yeah. cartwheels. I guess that's yeah. not normal. That's that's like not a normal thing. Um, really. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if, um, like I, I can't get in a vessel and like water so like i mean most... you can you did i did yeah. you did okay okay that that's that doesn't count Boy... <laughs> <laughs> hey you already <laughs> said it so anybody who's listening would be like that's not true <laughs> uh, hmm i don't should we get another question because that stumped us ever that stumped everybody lloyd's the only one who got it <laughs> i know right yeah we fantastic. well I mean, up until yesterday, I didn't think I could um, drive on the highway, and I did yesterday. Oh, oh good job. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. That's, that's nerve-wracking. It really is to, to get on the highway for the first time. When I first learned how to drive a stick, for whatever reason, I thought it was a good idea to learn on the highway. It wasn't. Oh. <laughs> but oh, no. I, I made it. I made it to my destination. It was fine. <laughs> People honked at me the whole way, but it's fine. <laughs> I cannot drive a stick. So that's really? like a normal thing that like, well, I mean, that's not normal fewer either. Fewer people are able to. Yeah, they don't really, it's like, it's one of those things. They don't really make cars like that anymore. Yeah. Most no, of them are automatic. Most but... of them are like, you know, I mean, they drive themselves. Yeah. Know? At this yeah. point. Yeah yeah. 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 Absolutely. Gosh. I know. Right. That's I'm like struggling too. One. I think from like words and like voice acting, like for a long time, I couldn't say refrigerator and I practiced it Ooh. so I can say refrigerator, but documentary. I don't even think I said that right. Documentary, 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 Doc- it, documentary. It, yeah. For the longest time, I couldn't say that like there. And then there's words that come up that I'm like. And then, yeah. I, you know, it's like, oh, my God, why can't I say this word, you know? Yeah, no, I I, um, I definitely know where you're coming from. There's plenty of words in my bank where I'm like, oh, I hate this word. <laughs> I want to say this word. It's always so interesting. I definitely get it. Because <laughs> these conversations happen and then immediately, and this is like an asshole thing, but and it's also an asshole for the person who made the word, but I always think of the fear of long words. Yeah. It's just like every it's single a huge time word. I, just, I just drop it and I'm like, yeah. don't do it. Don't what do is it? it? It's hippopotamus crosses quipidaleophobia. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like, why did I memorize that? Because I, I of all like, the things, of all the things to memorize, I memorize a Lloyd. lot of random things. Actually, that's because your brain is beautiful. With in, 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 <laughs> yes, you have a superpower. <laughs> that's what I tell my middle. I'm like, you have a superpower. Your brain yeah. is a beautiful uh-huh. brain, and it works. It's it's a super. It's a super brain. Yeah. Um. Well, thanks for thanks for coming to my party. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming for to our. Us. Jaws' TED Talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep at it, guys. Just yeah. keep going one point to the other. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter.